You are listening to For Amore Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Hello, welcome to Transformational Ministry. I am Jackie. And I am Lori. And we are ecstatic that you guys are here today and on uh, listening to Transformational Ministries. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different today. So this is a, the podcast where Jackie and myself, we just kind of, you know, just talk and uh, just, just allowing God to just speak through us. But this topic came... And I kind of wanted, uh, it's almost like I'm going to do somewhat of a informal interview with Jackie about, uh, and, you know, just asking him some questions and um, just seeing where God takes us with this today. So again, welcome guys to Transformational Ministries. All right. So good morning. <laughs> Well, afternoon. All right, good afternoon to you, Dr. Lori. And Praise how are Lord. you? I'm doing fine. I'm blessed. All I'm right, good. Amen. I tell you what, you know, sometimes uh, when we get ready, when, when it's like, when the button say go, mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. You ready to go? Yeah, oh, yeah. All Amen. right. Well, cool beans. Like, cool beans, as Mr. Shannon would say. Cool beans. All right. So, let's, today, it's just, like I said, it's a little bit of informal type interview. So we're going to be talking about America. This is um, this is a hot topic in oh this house God. over here. It's a hot topic. So I'm going to kind of just jump right in. The title today, I you know, to give this uh, podcast a a title, a point of discussion is: Is America a Christian nation? Now, that's a lot of people that could care less. That's not even anything that's on their mind or. But there is a segment, a population, millions of people who believe that, you know, by virtue of them being in this country, by virtue of them being, uh, and I'm going to call it like they said it, the chosen people, by virtue of them being white, mm -hmm. um, with a few black people sprinkled in there, here and there. But, you know, there was just a, a, a few people that believe that America is a Christian nation. But what makes it a Christian nation is what's going to blow your mind today. And we're going to be talking about that. So, um, first. That's a for subject. Praise the Lord. It kind of take you back. It kind of take you back um, at the beginning, you know, and then you kind of come up. To why we're here in this nation. Well, we're going to yeah. talk about that, but I kind of want to open with this song. I'm not going to sing it or anything. I'm just going to read it. But when most Americans hear this song, it just does something to them. This is a Lee Greenwood song, Proud to Be an American. So I'm oh. going to read the words to that. If all the things were gone, I worked for all my life. And had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Because the flag still stands for freedom. And they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died. Who gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Because there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee. Across the plains of Texas from sea to shining sea. From Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A. Where's pride? Where where's pride in every American's heart, and it's and it's time we stand and say that I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, 
And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today because there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. It's so much packed into this song <laughs> from the eyes of a believer and from someone who uh, filters things through the word of God. You know, it, this is an amazing song, but it's almost like saying we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. Now, God bless America. Not God that did it all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but it, you don't know that until you get to know God, right? Amen. So I kind of want to look at them. I do still love that song. Don't get me oh, wrong. Oh, yeah, it's a great song. Don't get me it, wrong. Give me that it points, patriotic feeling. Yeah. Hey, you know, I did... Over 20 years in the army. Yeah, so, and, you know, and when it starts talking about, um, I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me. I come from a military family. My dad yeah. was in the military. Yeah. His first son was in the military. His first daughter was in the military. Then the, the second daughter uh, married into the military. The third daughter, which is myself, took the easy way out, married in. And Roderick. Was and in then the, Roderick comes and, after and me. Yeah. Roderick was in the military. Roderick is the, the second son, but the um, fifth child. And then the last child went into the military. Yeah, so is. my whole family was military. Mm -hmm. But then we also was in a military town. That's yes, right. You know, so this was like. Uh, like a part of us mm. and you know nephews mm. and, and cousins and went into the military as well so this was just like part of life so when I hear that I when I hear that song where it talks about the not forgetting the men who died and gave that right to me my son is in the military mm. you know and so we tend to look at life like um definitely can see the military weaved in there but we see it as a blessing from the Lord, mm -hmm. a blessing from the Lord. Because for a lot of people, had they not went into the military and they stayed in their hometown, their their lives would have just, you know, deteriorated. They wouldn't have done anything. But at least going into the military, you know, it gave them structure and like you said that patriotic side and all of that things to look forward to so i just kind of wanted to hit that a minute um because i i still love that song today yeah, but yeah. i tend to view america now through the lens of the word of god and the lens of best i can god so let's start with a few questions if you okay. if, uh yeah uh now, before we get into these questions, mm -hmm. I, I like to kind of just kind of give you a, just a little overview of God's plan. Just you know, something, just a little bit. Okay. If that'd be all right. Yeah, I mean, the first question okay. is, is there a such thing as a Christian nation? So, where do we get that from? Okay. You can you can share that with us. Where did we get now, that from? Now, now. When you studied and read about America and, and the founders, mm -hmm. America was founded with the principles of God, mm -hmm. and it was founded as a parallel to Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to just Israel just a little bit. Uh, if you ask the question, was Israel a God-fearing nation? That's asked the question. Was at the beginning? Yes. It was completely God Absolutely. called out. Absolutely. We know that God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called out Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, so eventually two, the nations split. And one, ten of them completely was apostatic, completely idolatry. Was that nation, even though it was called out to be God, was that nation at that time a God nation? No. Mm -hmm. Because they was now following idols. They were. They were a nation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after God. Now the other two nations, the other two uh, a, a tribe, which is Judah and Benjamin, they stayed a little while longer. But eventually, they also began to worship other gods and do ungodly things. Mm -hmm. So therefore, mm -hmm. because of that, 
they was pulled away from God. They started out right, but it was pulled away from God. All right, now that's that gives you the idea what about a miracle. Okay. Okay, okay now we know that uh, Jesus told the uh, disciples that you're going to spread this gospel and here in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost part of the world. The uttermost, mm-hmm. uttermost part of the world. Mm-hmm. And then we know Paul started out trying to reach the Jews, but eventually he went to all those nations, all those countries mm-hmm. in his first and second and third missionary journey. So eventually he went, he was, the Holy Spirit told him, don't, you can't go here. I forbid you to go here. I forbid you to go here. And they didn't know where to go. Then all of a sudden he had a vision of a man in Macedonia mm-hmm. saying, come over here and help us. Then the Spirit of God spoke to him, go to Macedonia. Now, Macedonia was in Europe. Mm-hmm. That was the West. Mm-hmm. So now Paul now goes to Macedonia and preached the gospel. Mm-hmm. And eventually that led to the spread of the gospel in the United States. Mm. Can I just interject real mm-hmm. quick? So <clears throat> is it fair to say that the gospel was in Africa long before it came to America? Absolutely. Because all that, all, that, all, that all, all that land is Africa. Is, is Africa. Mm-hmm. Before they, Egypt before the, and the, all yeah, of that. Before, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Egypt is like Alexandria. It, 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 it was Egypt. Mm-hmm. It's all, mm-hmm. it's all that land, eventually... They second they they divided it, mm-hmm. but it was all one uh, South Africa. I mean Africa, not mm-hmm. South, but Africa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's that, that, that's yeah. That's it, was, so it, was in, it was in Africa long before uh, it was in America. But I just believe that as we as you go forward with this, we're going to understand when nations who started out right that's it absolutely who start, and including. Africa and India and all of these different mm-hmm. places where the gospel had traveled because there were no other religions. Uh, religions came in when people started rebelling against God and they started trying to create their own ways of getting to mm-hmm. God Absolutely. and not, not coming through what he wanted, mm-hmm. right? And so they started wanting to do their own things. But I think as we go through this, we're going to see the repercussions or the consequences of you trying to do your own thing instead of coming to God and through God the way that he wants you to. So now the gospel okay. is in America. Well, let's back up just a little bit before. We, now, well, how, well, how did it get to America? Well, that's what, what you were telling okay, us. Yes. Okay, now it was in in Rome. Okay, now the, the church now is... Exclude Jewish. There's no Judaism in in the body of uh, no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, that has that the, with the founder foundation of 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 uh, the, the religion movement. Mm-hmm. They out all of a sudden now we find the Roman Catholics and we find Roman the Roman Church and the Roman Empire combined into one religion mm-hmm. and one empire. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, now the persecution—you know, like, like Martin, the, when Martin Luther came along, all the persecution. All, in other words, nobody, nobody had no Bible. They, they didn't. They was listening to the Pope and whatever. So all of a sudden, they begin to be persecuted. The people that call that call out real Christians, mm-hmm. the, the Roman Catholic begin to persecute them and do all kind of crazy stuff. Especially when they start talking about water baptism submerging. Because they was preaching sprinkling and so on and so forth and, and, and giving tribute to, to the country, to, to them. Okay, now all of a sudden, we find uh, people want to get out of that environment and set sail to come to a new land. Mm-hmm. So they can, the, the reason why they came was the freedom of religion. Mm-hmm. That's why they came to America. Freedom of religion. Okay. Okay. All right, so, now they, we, we got a we got a foundation now. Okay, we got a, so they came here for freedom of religion. So when they came to this nation, um, there were already people in the land which were your Native Americans, which they had uh, their way already of uh, 
worshiping God and acknowledging mm-hmm. God, you know, the great spirit. And they had all of this, you know, they were one with the land and animals and all of that. But they did not necessarily know Yeshua as in Jesus Christ. Or yeah, that, Yeshua, the Messiah, the God that came through uh, the Jewish nation. They did not per se know that, but they they had their interactions and, and you know what? very much aware of God, the creator. And God, and I believe God holds you responsible for what you do, what you do know. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know something and you're worshiping God, mm-hmm. God honor that I believe because it. you don't know that the, like, like uh, uh, the, when Paul was in uh, Macedonia and there was 12 people had probably came from Apollos ministry that they had because Apollo had was preaching the gospel, uh, but Jesus he heard, but he didn't know the full detail until Priscilla and Aquila took him to the side and gave him full detail that Jesus is the Messiah and he have come. The kingdom have a come. The kingdom is not coming, but the king. So he understood that. <laughs> now Paul takes these twelve and says, "On what baptism? Oh, John." Oh, yeah, John was baptizing that the king was coming. Mm-hmm. So they didn't know, but they was, as far as they, they were saved, <coughs> but now he began to expound on them about, about Jesus actually coming, and then they have a better understanding. So the Native Americans, what they'd had was good mm-hmm. because that's what they had to recognize there is a superior. We, that, that created us. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. And, and actually, that was in. Every nation, every nation was aware of God to some degree, every nation, and some acknowledged him. But because there is an enemy of God, uh, of course, he also worked to pervert that which they believed and convinced them that, you know, they had this relationship with God. So the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ needed to come to every nation. That's what he said. It would go to every, every nation. nation. To the utmost part of the earth. Right. And so now and at that point it was left up to the people then. So I'm sending the gospel, but it's up to you to believe. So would it be fair to say there was a strong belief in America concerning the gospel, the Bible, the, you know, the word of God, God, the father, that was a strong belief in this country. However, in the midst of that, it still did not stop some people from robbing, raping and, and stealing land and lives, you know, from the native Americans. And it did not stop, some from uh, stealing, robbing, raping, and bringing people from other nations to this country to work. So in the midst of the gospel going forward, all of this other stuff was going on at the same at the time. Same, yeah, it was yeah. all going on. The Native Americans were being persecuted, and then the Africans that was brought over here at, at that time were being persecuted. And so all of this stuff was going on. So... Where did we get the idea that America is a Christian nation? You know what? I that 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 came from. Let me go back to the founders. Okay. Of okay. this country, the okay. Constitution, the founders of the Constitution of the uh, the Constitution, uh, with the, in, the in, uh, independence. It said uh, that uh, the Declaration of Independence. You had to go back. To 1776, uh, uh, those uh, 50, I think about 54 founders mm-hmm. who made up the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Mm-hmm. And about 52 of them was co- would, would be classified as Christians. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure some of them in there was Catholics, mm-hmm. but they was found out that God... Was the found, well, God was the creator mm-hmm, of the universe mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, they, I'm sure they didn't have all the um, understand prophecy and understand all the, you know, like God is is one, 
they probably think, well, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. However, they thought that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, the, so at the beginning, everything was founded upon the Bible. Okay. The Constitution mm-hmm. was founded on the Bible. The Declaration of Independence was, was founded on the Bible. Because when they first started out, all the schools was to train ministers. This is a little bit further back. All the schools was wasn't, not like, like it is today. So at the be, I would think at the beginning, you could say America was a kind of like a Christian nation. Okay, all right. Just like just like Israel, the Jews was a God fearing, yeah, a called they, out people. They would not have been cons- Jew, uh, Jerusalem, Israel. They would not have been considered a Christian nation because right. Christian no, means no, no. follower of Christ. No, they wouldn't. They, so no they, they, but, but, but. They were people of God. Uh, right. God, they God, acknowledged God. God. Exactly. Exactly. So it probably would have been better to call America uh, an acknowledger of God as well. But this country was considered a Christian nation, a nation that followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some would beg the difference. Some would argue the point because there was so much ungodliness going on in this nation. Even though that's the case, uh, for the people that did believe, it did not take away the fact that they were real followers and believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God. So let me ask you something. Okay, so we done established that this nation would be considered uh, a Christian nation. Well, now, now... At the beginning of the... Uh, I, I, yeah, the, I know that. Not, We're still at the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, got gotcha. <laughs> you. I thought you, well, did you see, I thought you said this nation would be considered... Well, the question was, why was America considered... Oh, why was? Okay, okay. yeah. Okay. All right, okay. All right, so the next... The question is, so if America is considered a Christian nation... Back then, yeah. did God see America different from other nations? Now, that's yeah. not something you can go straight to the Bible mm-hmm. and say, yes, God saw America as a Christian nation. But your best wise mm-hmm. guess or thought about that, did God see America different from other nations? I, that word, see, it, it's kind of... I don't know that I would say that uh, uh, God use America because he don't. Uh, yeah, so I, the I, answer is no. The no, answer is no. no. No, God doesn't see any nation greater than another. That's nation. the answer. That The reason why I ask that question is because there are a lot of people, especially in this nation, that do see America greater than any other nation. And because of that, they see that as in God sees this nation better or above other nations. But I would like for you to continue on with that thought about God using America. Yeah, I would also say that the scripture lets us know that God showed no favoritism to no man. So if he showed no favoritism to no man, mm-hmm. he showed no favoritism to no country. Right. Because God is love and he just, he loved everybody. So he don't uphold a country higher than another country. However, he he used America to spread the gospel even further. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, that right there explains a lot. So if God used America to uh, spread the gospel even more, then wherever the gospel went, when it was coming through Americans, that would cause other people to believe that America is a Christian nation because, right. you know, the, the missionaries the, that were yes, going into the, other uh, countries exactly. and teaching people. These people came from, many of them, not all, came from America. So the people in the other nations would equate these Americans to being Christians, and that's how the people in that country are. So it makes a lot of sense that uh, it, it was this was not considered a Christian nation because God had deemed America is a Christian nation. No, no. There's a lot of things that happen that cause people to believe that this nation was a Christian nation, plus, <laughs> plus the fact that I would say, uh, this is an educated guess, 
probably upwards of 80% or more people believe oh, yeah. that they were Christians by virtue of being in this country. Yeah. You know, uh, if, if something, in my early walk with Christ, is, a matter of fact, not as far as early, uh, because I took offense during the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. I, I remember this was just as good as that when he said that this is not a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And I think, what? And this is, well, you figure this has not been long ago. And I thought, that's not true. You were but, done with him. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, yeah, and I think, well, he, he definitely was letting people know what I'm doing and about the same sex marriage and stuff. Get it, get it together. This is not a Christian nation. This is a, basically, if it's not a Christian nation, it's a heathen nation. Mm -hmm, he, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> but I took offense of it. But technically, he was right. He was right. He was right. The, the, however the nation started out, one way, it's not that now. It's, it's, how, it's how you end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me, let me see. That is so profound because... That would be every single nation that exists. And the reason I say that, every nation that was started in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because every people came from um, uh, Noah's family. Yeah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Mm -hmm. Every nation came out from under them. So everybody started hearing the same thing. Remember now, Noah believed God, right? Yes. And he built this ark and he was preaching, telling people it was going to rain. Well, who was there hearing him firsthand? firsthand? Ham, Japheth, and Shem, right? Mm -hmm. That his sons, they was hearing that. They was hearing about uh, Yahweh, Jehovah. They was hearing that. They knew about God. Right? And they understood God. They understood that this thing right here that's happening while we shut up in this art, God did this. So when they started, they was ministering this message to their people. So in the beginning, yes, yeah. all people understood this and knew this because life started over. Before that, everybody was killed. Yes, there was right. only three sons left yes, yes, I see. and and yeah. that message was heavily into them because they lived it yeah okay so i out from under them came all of these nations every nation came out from under them so in the beginning they understood this they knew this right but as they migrated and went to these different places i guess people got it in their head they don't have to Obey God or listen no, to God. I, 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 Somewhere it, it it changed. So when they went to all these different nations, you see people worshiping, serving God in all kinds of weird, kind of crazy ways. <laughs> you know. So now this is just my thought because I couldn't track you through history all the way back then. We can see a lot of things biblically mm -hmm. and we can see a lot of people going astray after you know uh, the time of Noah. We can see a lot of people going astray yeah. and doing their, their own things. But you know when, when we get to um, uh, Isaac, I mean we, we see Abraham Isaac and Jacob. When we get to Jacob we can really begin to see the breakdown of people going and right, doing, yeah, yeah. you know, people marrying uh, folks that they were never supposed to marry. You know, mm. we can see all of these different changes where people were brought up under God. Abraham, do you think he didn't tell Isaac and didn't tell oh, Jacob? Yeah, he, he, yeah, shared with, yeah, yes. They was in the and Bible then, yeah, they was in the tents together. And then God reestablished his own covenant with each one of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but as you continue to read the scriptures, you'll see where the people begin to separate themselves and, and start doing everything. But all of humanity came from uh, Noah's three sons. Everybody else before that was wiped out. That's right, sure was. They was wiped out. Wiped out. Okay, so, and I said that to say that all of these nations, before all of this 
wickedness and serving all these other gods and all this stuff. Places like Africa, they knew God. Yes, they knew it. They knew God. The people that traveled down to Africa, these were the people that, you know, I want to be careful because I don't want to say these were the Jewish people that traveled down there. But all of these people were of the same people group. And, now, and keep this in mind. See, the uh, the word Christian didn't even come into existence in, uh, un, until uh, maybe 1300, 1400. That word, well, that's a Greek word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that word wasn't even used. Mm. And, and go... <laughs> And then, well, this one letter said the Caucasian race didn't come into existence until uh, 1600. in the 1600s. Man, I, that, boy, that's some that's some stuff right there. Well, the Caucasian race didn't come into existence. What happened? All the other people were people of color. Yeah. So you ask yourself, you know, where did all of this stuff start and where did it change? You know, and then so now we're here. We're only talking. I just wanted to interject that about other countries and everything, that they all started out knowing God. Uh-huh. They didn't just fall into these beliefs. Uh, there's an enemy out there, of course, and, and he deceived and tricked people. But it's not like they did not know God. Only time things change is when that generation does not continue to talk about God. Like if I got saved and it just stayed with me, and I don't minister to my children and my grandchildren, Jeez. you know, you run the risk of a generation not knowing God. And you know what? That's a good point. Because uh, in, 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 uh, during Joshua time, mm-hmm. they served God. And, mm-hmm. and the, all the elders, they served God. Mm-hmm. But uh, once, the, once the elders died, judges said there was a generation that did not know God. Mm. Mm. We're responsible for sharing the gospel. We are. It starts with our family first. How do you expect your family to know God and you don't say nothing or minister to them in no kind of way? Mm. You know, I've tried to impart them to my grandchildren, but as I'm talking, I, I, I sense that, you know, I want to step it up some because I want to make sure that, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they know who Jesus is. They know who God is. Now, God has to give them the revelation. God, The Father has to give them the revelation of who Jesus is, you know, being yeah. the Messiah. He has to do that. But it is our responsibility to share the gospel, to let them know, hey, it, uh, Jesus came and he died for our sins. They may not fully grasp who Jesus is, but at least they've been told who Jesus is. So let's go back to America. So here we are here in this country. Because you know that time be going fast. So here we are in this country called America. This nation called America. And as I started this podcast, I read that uh, Lee Greenwood song. And that thing just touched you. I'm proud to be an American. Listen, listen. So I am what you call a dual passport holder. I am a citizen of Sierra Leone in West Africa, and I am a citizen of America. But actually, it's the other way around. I'm a, I was born a citizen of America, and I was reinstated as a citizen of Sierra Leone. But when I went to Sierra Leone, and, uh, you know, I got to see the country and got to see the people. You know, there was a lot of different things that was communicated to me, you know, being in a country that was all black and people look like me and, you know, I walk like the people and even some of my temperament was <laughs> like the people. All of that was great and fine. But I will tell you this. Although there were many who went over there and they started making plans to stay and to live in that country. And you can go on YouTube and pull up Americans who have left and now live over there. I never, ever, ever had that thought or plan to do that. They won't live over there. No, because I recognize, regardless of how my ancestors got here and regardless of all the stuff we've gone through in this nation, I realize... I'm an American. This is where God allowed me to be birthed in the earth. And it was in this 
on this land, in this soil, here, in this country. So when I think about God, I think about God, I thank you that you allow me to be an American, right? I have to be grateful to God for oh, that. Oh, yes. Right? Thank now, God. If, I was, yeah. if I was born and raised in another country, then I would be grateful and thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful that I'm American. I, I'm thankful to God that this is what he chose for me. Right? But I'm also thankful to God that he would allow me to be reinstated in the land, the natural land that my ancestors came from. I find that... Uh, an amazing thing that he would do that, right? So, you know, I, we're not bashing America, but we want to deal with the spiritual aspect of America. So you kept pointing out the fact that you said back then, back then, back then. So now let's look at, so what is happening in America that makes it less of a nation considered to be a Christian nation. Now, What's your thoughts about that? Well, let me uh, uh, say this. Um, in the nineteenth, uh, the nineteen hundreds, mm -hmm. the I just looked up a few things as you as you were telling me about what we were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is um, uh, the national identity as a Christian nation? See, this wasn't always considered a Christian nation. Those are, but in the 1900s, mm -hmm. the identity of a Christian nation came to realization in the 1900s. And, and, uh, and then in 1950, they put in God we trust on the currency. Mm. And then, mm, this, interesting. And then also, they brought in a national day of prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay? You see, <clears throat> back then, back, a, little, a little, during the time, uh, there was not a lot of there was a lot of other religion in the country. There was Christianity dominated Christian uh, dominated the religious system in America. They, mm -hmm. they, Islam was <coughs> was not an issue, and all these other different religion in America didn't really didn't exist. There was only one religion in America, and that's why they say, oh, that most of the people in America is classified as Christian. So. That's I guess I get the it got the tag that uh, this is a you know Christian nation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just something that I, I kind of did research on there. Yeah. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. what what? All right. So we, apparently, uh, according to what you stated earlier about Obama saying this is not a Christian nation, and then once you you know looked into that and just gave that some thought, you started saying, okay, well he's not wrong. So what has happened? What has changed to make this less of a Christian nation than when it was? Than it was? Uh, they, yeah, they be, yeah, because all the uh, migrants begin to come in. They begin to immigrants, bring in immigrants. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, immigrants become to come in and bring in other religion. Even even from Ireland, they brought ha Halloween in. Mm -hmm. During that time, the potato shortage over there, mm -hmm. they, they bought a lot of stuff as people migrate into America. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, now the lawmakers start catering and changing. See, before, those founders and lawmakers was God-fearing people, even though they did a lot of other stuff now. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean that, they, that because they was God-fearing that they didn't allow slavery. God allowed that to happen mm -hmm. to build this nation. Mm -hmm. That was, that was and, and also... Uh, to get this nation established because it was on the backs of slavery this nation was built mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. so that was that that was God had all that planned now that, that, that was that's just the way things were and I, I know some people listening to that that could be quite frustrating because you would feel like well well why would God allow a nation to be built on the backs of slavery you know what did we do why did we deserve that you know and and I mean our ancestors and everything. But you know, because that is a truth that you are stating that, and, and, and all of that, we find <coughs> even uh, the Israelites was in slavery in Egypt for over four hundred years. For four hundred years, mm -hmm. but God said they would come out mm -hmm. with great wealth. Oh wow! Uh, Revelation. They was enslaved to Africans. Absolutely. Hey. Oh my goodness! 
Because Pharaoh and all of them during that time, these were African. Absolutely. The word African did not exist then, but Egypt and all of Africa was one land, one yeah. nation, one country. It was all one. Amen. And, so and, when you think about that, that is kind of funny how uh, repos- you know that- the Jews were enslaved in an African nation. Because Egypt was not Egypt like we know Egypt yeah. today. It was not Egypt like that then. This problem. was like North Africa. And whatever man saw it, that's here he also reap. I mean, we see that in the New Testament, but you know, God God, God judges and he sees from, from a from a big point of view than what we see. And all of a sudden, they had as enslaved. Now it reversed a little bit. So it it. You know, we are here. If it would not be in whoever of a person of the sentence of slavery, if that would have happened, you would not have been here. I would not have been here. The gospel would not have been where it's at today. Mm-hmm. The nation would not have been where it is. So we got to give God the praise and give that the, all things you do work together for good. Mm-hmm. Even and, though you might not understand it, you might not be able to phantom it, you know, like people are always saying, why would God do this and why would good? That's because we don't know the big picture. We don't see We that don't either. know every single thing that transpired from like God's point of view. We don't know those things. Mm-hmm. All we know is history. We see the results of what people did. But we don't see or understand the God dimension of, Lord, why did you allow this and why did you allow that? But here's the thing. What happened in America has happened in every country. Yeah. It has happened in every country. Maybe not chattel slavery to that degree. America had its own unique flavor. But if you go into every country, you're yeah. going to see a people that have been persecuted, that have been killed, that have been treated wrong. You know, you're going to see that. And look, look at North, North uh, Korea. In our mind, we can't fathom that. Why don't the people revolt and just get out of there? Overthrow that country and that nation. You're over there starving and living in darkness and all of this. And you don't know nothing. Well, that's the problem. They don't know anything. They don't know. So they don't know to overthrow the country because they've been fed lies that this right here, other people are trying to hurt us. They're trying to. And that's what they believe. Mm. So they worship their leadership, you know, thinking that this is uh, this is uh, our God the, the right, who protects us and looks because they don't know. And, and, and you Ooh, can't man. you can't make mm. yourself know what you don't know. I got that from <laughs> you. It's you impossible to know what you don't know. Exactly. So now that's North Korea. But then you go to other countries, you go to India and you look at the caste system. You got a whole segment of people over there that's on the bottom of the wrong because they weren't born into this particular family or something. So they cast out. They're, they're, they're treated like they're less than, you know. So you got something going on in every country. Now, the only thing I'll be honest with you. I'm going to throw this in there. The only thing that did kind of amaze me a little bit is that people of African descent are treated the same way in every country. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's that, that one right that there. That, it's like, okay, they that's are treated that. the same way in every single, on every single continent. Darker skinned black people or, you know, people of African descent are treated the same way. That make you do kind of think that. We are, we are, the, we are the people of God. And the, yeah, enemy, can, the enemy is after the, after the, after the destroy mm-hmm. God's elect. Mm-hmm. I, I tell you, it will, it will it make you think something. But, yeah, but all in all, guys, you know. We are still talking about America here and some of the comments we make. You know, we have our own thoughts about things. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys have some thoughts and you would like to share them in the chat because we can always go back and look at comments and things. But so should we now here's let's let's. okay. so we see that America's changed. We see that um, things that were not uh, acceptable or even considered in this country are now some of the things that are in the forefront of this country. At one point, 
uh, uh, black people, uh, the Hispanic people and Native American people were never ever considered to be really a part of this country. And so they were never consciously thought of as being doing anything in this country except for servitude and things like that. Well, that has changed. That is not the same anymore. You got black folks all over in leadership. That's right. Yeah. Native Americans, Latinos. Latinos is the fastest growing um, uh, uh, ethnic group in America. And after a while, America will be an English and Spanish speaking country because the uh, the Latinos are growing that fast. Mm. Another thing, LGBTQ. These were um, a community of people that were on the fringes in America. Yeah. I remember growing up as um, a young person, a teenager. I hadn't, I didn't know anything about people being gay. What was that? Mm -hmm. Oh what, yeah. What was once or two? What you want to call it? one or two? Not a many. Well. And even when I did see him, I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. Like when I saw a guy that was effem effeminate, I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. Why was he acting like that? But nobody said, because he liked boys or he liked men. Nobody said that. It just I saw it and I thought, well, that's odd. Ew. I wouldn't want no guy to act like a girl. That's all I... But as time went on and you start learning things, it's still, as Jackie just said, it wasn't that many. Yes, yeah. But now in America, when you see the American flag, you might also see the, it's called the pride flag uh, uh, along with the American flag. However, I take offense with that because that was taken from a promise that God gave us that he would never flood the earth again. So he created the rainbow in the sky, which was a beautiful signal, uh, yeah. symbol unto the people of God to let them know, I flooded this joker. I took everybody out, except for the ones that was left on that ark. But I'm not going to do that anymore. And and also, you look at the book of Revelation, there was a, a rainbow around the throne of God. Mm. So... Yeah, how the enemy just take what's God mm -hmm. and to honor God as a reminder and desecrate it. Mm -hmm. That you like, you know, because I remember having a, having a, I, I had this, uh, I bought an umbrella. And it was a rainbow kind of umbrella and I was going to use it. And my daughter said, Daddy, you know that color there, so and so? I said, What? I said, Hey, hold it. you can have it. Because I, I, I didn't want to be a, but why is that? Right. Well, it's a miracle. God created the rainbow. But now, like, you know, when you see the American flag, if you see the rainbow flag, guess what? You equate that to America as well. You equate it to a freedom, them being free to be who they are or what they are or do whatever they want to do. That's how that's presented to the world. Well, isn't that how the American flag was presented? This is our country. We yeah. are free. We don't do what other people tell us to do. Mm -hmm. You know. And that one number three is what you we we'll talk about that. Talk about that now. Read that one. Well, I just did. You just Wait, read it? What yeah, what is happening in America that makes it less of a nation that's considered to be Christian? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, I know as I must was a I must was kind of caught up in caught the up spirit. In <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so that's what I'm talking about right yeah. now. That you know, this was a nation that at one point there were segments, uh, ethnic groups of people that weren't really considered to be a part of this nation. This was um, a Caucasian nation, and Christ was their symbol. The cross was their symbol, and you know, they they maybe at some point they considered themselves to be the chosen. Uh, people, mm -hmm. you know, because Jewish people were no longer a part of the belief because, like you said, the um, th they had started believing that they took the place of the Jewish people in the eyes of God. Right, yeah. But we know that's yeah. not true. If you read Romans 9, 10, 11, you're going to find out that is not true. Paul brings down a real stern warning. Don't think that you have now replaced them. You, replaced you were engrafted in, but they are still the root. 
Oh, get my veil. I'm just saying. Put that in the they steal the root. Yeah. So, but here in America, you know, that belief of, of, of replacing the Jews, you know, that was part of ingrained in, ingrained in this country, which is why they saw themselves superior to everybody else because of, you know, the foundation and nobody, everybody that came and that was a part of that, they were all White. And you know, and the thing about it, because of the leadership that after World War II, mm -hmm. I mean, America was, was thriving, mm -hmm. building the toilet, building the Empire State Building, mm -hmm. tall buildings, and then the, then the World Trade Center. And during that time, whatever country had the tallest building, it's like a, that was, that, that was a dominant power. Mm -hmm. That was the illustration. That's what they tried to do back in the the Tower of Baal, mm. build something high. Build. Oh, wow, okay. yeah. It, it, that's that's build that time. Yeah, build mm -hmm. that time doing, mm -hmm. uh, in, in uh, Iraq. Iraq, Iraq, Iraq. Mm -hmm. Yeah, during that time, uh, Babylon. Mm -hmm. And so, America was thriving. And, and, and it was, I mean, money, the, the world currency was a dollar. America was growing. And all of a sudden, come up, leadership started changing. Then they bring in abortion in the nineteen in nineteen seventy four, mm -hmm. killing killing of babies. Okay, was that pleasing to God? Oh no! Mm -hmm. Now America began to slip mm -hmm. from his position, mm -hmm. and as America moved forward, America now become the, these leaders coming. They're not God fearing leaders. Mm -hmm. They got all kind of stuff, and now you look at what's the leadership in America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican, what they unsaved mm -hmm. the leadership. Absolutely, I I will stamp on that. We tend to look at this country, and I'm going to correct somebody right now. We tend to look at Democrats as unsaved, believing in doing anything you want to do, and then Republicans are the saved. These are the representatives of God. I beg to differ. You're going to find that in this world, in this life, both of these groups. Are unsaved. Here's the thing. If you really look at Democrats, for the most part, they're probably closer to how God is. You have a choice whether or not you want to serve God. You have a choice whether or not you want to live saved. You have a choice not to go and do this and do that. God gives people a choice, That's right? right? But then he also turns around and says, but I'm going to help you make the right choice. I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to give you my word. And, and for you to be able to find out how to do this thing correctly and not be trying to just make up stuff, right? So he gave us his spirit, first of all. He put us his spirit inside of us to help us live for him and ident be identified as his. The second thing he did is gave us the Bible. Um, a lot of people believe that, oh, that was just written by man. God, Of course God used man to write the Bible, and he preserves his word. Yeah, there may be some things in there that's not his and this and that, but that that is his, he will preserve that, right? Okay, so now, now but you got people who, I don't want to serve God. I don't want to live for God. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to hear about no Bible. I'm not... But he gives you a choice. He you says, choice. okay, I'm going to let you go ahead on and do what you want to do. I'm going to turn you over to that. That's going to be your life. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give you, you know, what you want. That reprobate Exactly. Yeah. So in on one sense, that's how the Democrats are. Do what you do. Do what you feel. Do you. Right? Yeah. yeah. But then the. the, the your the, truth. Exactly. The Republicans. You know, they're not even living this thing, but they want to legislate how people live, but they're not even doing it no. because you can't be racist. You come to call it like it is. You can't because I'm a Republican. Well, at least I was identifying as Republican. Yeah, but you cannot be um, racist. Uh, looking and treating people like they're less than you because an, a, a good idea of what the Republicans stand for now is what you saw on January the 6th. That was a glimpse into the Republican way of life and mentality because none of them tried to shut that down. Right. You only had about one or two 
<laughs> they tried to come out against that. But the majority, they felt like it was right. They felt like what was done at the Capitol was right. So that gave you a glimpse into what the Republicans are like now. You cannot be like that and say you represent God when God has told us to love him first and foremost, and then love our neighbor like we love ourselves. So you do away with love. Yes. But you you amplify the flag and the gun and the superiority of white people. When Trump said there are some good people on, in that group that was saying Jews will not replace us in Charlotte, uh, South Carolina, yeah, okay. So when they were saying that, and Trump said uh, uh, there were some good people on there, and then he didn't even shut that down, there were no Republicans coming out saying, heck to the no, this is not of God. That's right. So what does that tell you? These Republicans that exist today, today? Yeah. and the Democrats that exist today, and these folks ain't say No. They, they don't have the love of God in their hearts. And then if the leaders are, the nation is crippled. Now, that don't mean the people in the nation is individual because wheat and tear are growing together. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I, you know, I, I want to, let me clarify just a little bit. When I say these people are not saved, I'm saying when you say the Republican Party, I'm telling you, that is not a Christian party. Yeah. When you say the Democrats, uh, I'm saying that is not a Christian party. Okay? You may have Christians that are in there. Yeah. But what these the people overall. stand for and what you can say what you stand for out of your mouth and you can write it on a piece of paper. But your life will bear out what you truly believe. Hallelujah. My pay my bill. So when we saw, unfortunately, a lot of the things that our president 44 was doing, uh-huh. and we saw 45, thank you, because yeah, well, so 44, 44, now, 44, I, got 44. Little, I got a little attitude with you too. 44, you 44 with Jack. Yeah, you? but but I'm saying, when we saw a lot of this stuff that, that he was doing and this party stood behind him when it was criminal, when it was sinful, and it was just not, even now, even now, still standing to protect and, and uphold that. That gives you an idea of where you're located when it comes down to the Lord. I will use 44 to qualify, to, to also clarify. When it comes down to 44, when 44 started doing all of this crazy stuff with LGBTQ, this is how I felt. I can't support that, right? You can, you can care about people. And you can care about treating people right and doing good by people. But as a president of the United States, you don't have to get involved in that. You can push treating people right, but you don't have to get involved with, you know, people getting married and things like that, especially if you're coming from the standpoint of a believer. So when it comes down to a Christian or a believer, true Christian, true believer. We don't make stuff up in our head and say, oh, we're not going to believe in homosexuality. We're not. Well, that's just what the Bible says. And because we're believers, we go along with what the Bible says. But now, oh, can we treat people any kind of way? Absolutely, Absolutely no. not. No. If you do not treat them with the love of God and the respect, you can't claim God if you want to see people killed and brutalized and die, and you can't do that. Yeah, Jesus talked about the love. He gave, he gave us an example of love. The ten, of the, of the, what the greatest commandments was to love God with all everything and then love your neighbor just as that. Second is the first, second is just as the first. Right, right, right. And I remember I, I, this is this is a, a going. A, I, I'm trying not to go into the weeds, but I, I, I remember being in a meeting and it was held by uh, the LGBTQ community. Now I didn't know this going in. What I'm not gone. Uh, I don't know, but I'm just saying I didn't know this is you know. So, but it was held by them. But I remember raising my hand, pretty much asking, okay, so. 
I identified myself. I, I'm a Christian. What do you want from me? Because it had turned a little hostile when it came down to Christians. And so I identified myself in a group as a Christian. And it's like, what do you want from me as a Christian? If I treat you right, if I treat you with respect and I show you love, what do you want? Because you can't demand that I don't believe the way I believe. You can't ask me to give up my beliefs to make you feel better. That belief. Yeah, because now it's like you want me to change for you to feel better, but I, I'm I'm the opposite of you. So when I said that and they really gave that some thought, they realized, okay, you live in this country, I live in this country. Let's be civil. Let me treat you right and respectful. Now, but if you do something that's deemed illegal or an ungodly as far as you affecting somebody else, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a problem. But if you do what you do, I'm a, I'm a heterosexual, and I, I'm I, I'm I'm married. What I do with my husband is my business. That's that's our business behind closed doors. You know whatever we do, that's not for the world. So, but what we're doing is not affecting anybody else. As long as I'm not out here saying, you know, my husband this and that, and maybe you should come and try to no. No. So whatever you doing, you do it. Keep that between that. Nobody has to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, God knows, but that's between you and God, you know, but don't try to make me as a believer, give up my faith and give up my belief and give up my Bible to make you feel better. That's not right. That's right. You're not asking the Muslims to do that. Oh, hey. You know, but I'm just saying. And that's exactly. And, and some of their beliefs is that they will kill you. If you are found to be LGBTQ, they will kill you. But nobody's out here saying, you know, preaching that the Muslims should give up the Quran and all of this. Yeah. So we got to find a way to do this better. And I and 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 I think the law helps a little bit that you don't have the right to kill somebody because you don't agree with what they do in their lifestyle. Now, if they doing something, trying to rape you or trying to molest your child or something like that, and you lose it for a moment, that's all I'm going to say about that. Woo! You know. But, I'm telling you. Well, let me get back out of the weeds. We got one more. <laughs> one more. But I, I just wanted to say, you know, when it came down to how this particular community felt when it came to Christians. It was really quite hostile. But once I said what I said, they got it. It's like, you want me to stop being a Christian and give up my faith and my beliefs so that you can feel better. But what if I said, well, I want you to stop being a homosexual so that I can feel better. I don't control that. All right. Let's go on. We got two. Well. Ooh, la, la. Okay, we got two more. Yeah. And uh, one is, okay, so we're seeing how this nation has started uh, to go down. And by that, we see that we see guns, we see murders, we see rapes, we see all this stuff. We see this stuff all over social media. And this, this is something we did not have. But now we can see it all. We can see what's happening all over America in little small countries, big countries, uh, states. I mean, we can see all of this happening. And so we see that, well, it's not like that picture that was fat painted in the 50s, you know. The White House, the picket fence, and Jane, and Mark, and Spot, and you know, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. was good and even the black people stayed in their areas and they oh, were trying to do what they was doing or you didn't see them but it, it painted a picture of America being a certain kind of way <laughs> yeah well, exactly it's not like that it's now. not like that it's mm -hmm. not like that now so we see this now as well is this a Christian nation everybody else is looking at America they're seeing all of this horrible stuff going on and they're most likely and, saying and they're, no way. And they're, they're challenging now America democracy. They're, they're, they're saying, hey, don't work. So you the one that that's Ooh, that's that's, that's the like Russia they like, oh look at look at look at America. America was an example, was a citizen on the hill. But what happened on uh, uh, January 6th, you're like, look at that. What, what's going on there? And they're trying to tell you how to live. Oh, they they don't have, they don't have it together. 
So I didn't he, even think about that. That's good. That's good. So and, 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 and the question, you know, number, like you said, number four here, should we pray for America? You know, when 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 God <clears throat> dealt with uh, Saul, when Saul time was up, King Saul was up. Samuel was still praying for him and trying to get God say, "Uh, uh-uh, stop! I reject it." So because he have been disobedient. Now, as, as far as praying for America, you pray for the leaders in America. Mm-hmm. Pray that now. Now Daniel prayed for the nation of Israel because he was in authority position. Mm-hmm. He was in a power position. Mm-hmm. So he said, for, well, God, we have sinned. And he confessed the sins of the nation because he was in that position, like a president. Mm-hmm. So if the president <coughs> of this country <coughs> began to repent and serve God, mm-hmm. I'm not talking about just being a Roman Catholic or whatever, and serve God right. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. his cabinet and these leaders began to repent. <coughs> God will, I, I believe God will, they, those are the ones who should be praying for America. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But as far as we as believers, we should be praying that God will change the people, the, the, the leaders. Mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. praying for them. God bless them. No, God, not God bless them. America, but calling the names of this Joe Biden. Right now, listening to this podcast, the president is Joe Biden. And you know what? what, we, what we have, <laughs> the wall that we have on them, mm-hmm. as far as. The president, his cabinet, the senators, all this stuff we have on there. And when you when you look at that and you start praying for those leaders, those senators, those congressmen, and the city and the state and the law enforcement, all this, all these people in authority. Mm-hmm. When you when you put your list up of all these people, you praying for them personally. Yes, that makes up yes, America. Yes, we said we don't make America up. We might be citizens of it, but the leaders make America. Yes. So praying. So to those of you that's listening, praying, God bless America. That is not the right prayer. We got to pray for those that are in authority. We got to pray for those that are in leadership positions. We need to be calling the president's name, the vice president's name. We need to be calling. If you don't know all other senators and all of that, but, but you are praying for the senators those that are representing all of these states. You're praying yes. for, you know, these different um, positions, law enforcement, and things like that. You know, you're getting to the nitty gritty. You're you're at least pointing God, this, 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 this segment of people right here, you know, and just asking God to bless. Listen, guys, we need sanctification. Ooh. We need salvation. We need to be praying that God, please save. Save these people that are saved. And they are representative of yours. Save these people that are claiming to represent your way and your way of life. And clearly, Lord, they, they are only representing you in one area, but not in true holiness. You know, this is the kind of stuff we need to be praying mm-hmm. for. So your answer was, instead of praying for America as a whole, pray for the leadership. Absolutely. Pray for those that are in. That's that's a real powerful acknowledgement of how to turn a nation around. How God, God said he'll have mercy on who he'll have mercy on. And clearly he's having mercy on America. Mm-hmm. Clearly he is having a, a mercy. Because let me tell y'all something. When you go back and you look at what happened at, on January 6th, when you look at that, Ooh. if you see that, if it had gone the way that the people wanted it to go. They wanted to kill Mike Pence. They wanted to kill Nancy Pelosi. They wanted to stop that um, vote. They were, if that had gone the way that they had intended, it would have broke out. It would, yeah, it would have broke out in every single state, and you would have started seeing the collapse one right after another. Because when you have anarchy, you can't. Uh, you can't function like that. You can't function mm-hmm. with people that took up arms and doing whatever they wanted to do. It was a country, I don't know, it was it Brazil or some country? Venezuela? That, 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 some country that they that they 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 they, they flooded the capital too. And they, they just flooded the capital and, 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 and attacked senators and the police officers was arresting a lot of them. They did the same thing that mm. it, it was I think it, it. I think it was. It was a country that that, that that's just happened. Well, it may not have been Venezuela. Well, it wasn't Venezuela. Uh, it, uh, 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 it wasn't Venezuela. I can't remember that country, mm-hmm. but it's it just happened. 
Okay. And, and but they shut it down. They was able to shut it down and it, uh, made an arrest about a uh, thousand people. Or so. Wow. See, but that's what I mean by the mercy of God. Because had that not been shut it'd have been down, it'd been a ripple, ripple effect. Oh yeah, that that group of Domino people effect. would have took over, and they would have instated Donald Trump as president, and they would have defied all the laws and the Constitution to make that happen. But listen, they are located all over the United States. These type people, so they would have empowered other people to do the same thing and I'm going to tell you what they would have did they would have tried to shut down every democrat that was in office and reinstate every republican that they wanted in office yeah. just like this man hired hit men I can't think of his name but he hired hit men to Mexico. try to kill um for Democrats, that's that would have that was a ripple effect. What yeah. y'all saw, that was the ripple effect. But because God did not allow that to happen, it shut down all of these little fires, mm. right? All these little volcanoes that were getting ready to erupt. He shut them down. And the, see now, now the people want to call themselves Christian nationalists. Those are the mm. ones that that attack the Capitol and they want to pray in the Capitol. In Jesus' name. Can, is that, does that make sense? Now, see, that's, now, that's giving that's you. America. That's, that's, America. that's America. That's America. That's what I was about to say. That right there is giving you um, a glimpse of the true state of America where this segment of people, which y'all need to understand, this segment of people was the representation of the people that voted for and put in office uh, President uh, Trump at that time. So this segment of people that went to uh, um, the Capitol, mm -hmm. all right, we even knew a guy that was there who was a professing Christian who was there and clearly was okay with it, yeah, yeah. right? A charismatic, tongue-talking preacher, right, was there and was okay with that. But that gives you a, a bird's-eye view into this segment of America. And it, it didn't go away. It just settled down. Still, yeah. It just settled down. So, you know, this is the country that we live in. And understand if stuff like that persists, there will be another civil war. You can't get away from that. Our thing is, God, give us some real godly, godly leadership. Give us, please give us some God. Because when it's truly a man of God or a woman of God and they're in leadership, they don't depend on themselves. They depend on God. They're not out here starting fires. They're not out here instigating so if he was, and I, I don't want to be rude, but if he was, in fact, a man of God, the way that they thought he was, then he would not have been instigating and starting these type of fires, right? Mm -hmm. That would not have happened. And, and you know, and you know um, the prophets of old, they corrected the king or the president, whoever, prime minister, they, when they was out of order, they mm -hmm. corrected them. Well, the last president had it. Evangelicals around him, but they wasn't correcting him. They was they were just pampering, pampering him, encouraging him. But they wasn't saying what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. You they wasn't calling that out as the prophets of old ones. Mm -hmm. So what what was the purpose? And it should be the same way. It should be the same way with the president, with our current president. He should have godly men and women around him talking to him and encouraging him through the word and praying for him. We pray for this president. We pray, because he is the president, we pray for 44 too. But yeah. till, well, well, 44, 45, 45 yeah, we and 46, <laughs> all yeah. of them. Oh, we pray for all of them. Right. Yeah. So um, in, in saying that, you know, I did not know where we were going to go in this discussion today, but it really has encouraged me to pray for our leadership in this country because, you know, walking through this, I do now see that America is really far from being what would have been considered a Christian nation. You know, it's just it's it's a it's a melting pot of a little bit of 
everything now and you can still see God when, when things happen. You can still see God, how people come together and it is about God and people work together and you can still see that, you know, but um, yeah, the answer is we need to pray, not just pray for America, pray for the leadership in America. So I appreciate that. And we're going to end on what is the hope for this nation? What What is the hope? What, God what, is the hope. God is yeah, the hope. Yeah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's the hope. And uh, as, as believers, we have to still pray that, um, again, for the leaders uh, of this nation. Yeah, but, um, the Bible lets us know that men will grow more evil and wicked and wicked as time progress. Mm -hmm. and this, because yeah. the love of God will wax cold. Yeah, love, people. Love, people love. don't love God yeah. the way that they used to. But again, like and I said, see that, you don't pass that down. And we can see that because how can you say you love God and you don't love people? When oh, you see pe good. the love of people, when you don't love people, you say you can't say you love God whom you never seen, mm -hmm. and you love the people who you see every day. Wow. And they say that's what is the that's you determine the love that you have for God. Is, how you love people. Amen. Well, to those of us that are considered to be um, believers, people of faith, people of the way, um, followers of Yeshua, you know, we, we really do need to pray because that is the only hope we have. And, and not only that, but we need to share the gospel. We need to share um, the 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 good news about Jesus, the good news about Yeshua, the good news about Messiah, the good news about the Christ. We need to share the good news. We need to share that him dying on the cross, his death gave us life and it gave us the ability to love and to mm -hmm. to to care and to you know take care of and you know he he his death also took care of the sin issue and and that's one thing that people don't seem to want to know anymore they don't want to know anything about sin but the bottom line is that i don't care how good your life is or how well it's going or how you can present yourself on social media and or how much money you have listen Any one of the Ten Commandments that you break, you have broken them all. Oh, my God. All. Yeah. So yeah. if you commit adultery, having sex outside of marriage, fornication, if you lie, you cheat, you steal, you do, you don't treat your neighbor right you don't love god any of these things anyone that you do not do you do not do them all but here's the thing christ came and he lived and he died for each and every one of us to be <coughs> reconciled to be made right with god to all of this stuff that we do to literally free us up from all of that. Does that mean that now you live a life where you don't do anything wrong? It doesn't mean that. But even if you did do something wrong, you care so much about God and you care so much about people that you want to get that right and mm -hmm. make that right. Right. So we still need to be sharing the gospel, the good news about Christ. What what who is he? What did he come here for? What did he do that makes me want to follow him? We still need to be letting people know how what did God do for you? How did he change your life? Why do you follow him? What is it about him that 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 you are spending your life serving him? We need to be telling people because these people, no matter how they look, they're still in desperate need of a savior. Amen. Still in desperate need. So if you want to see America turn around, let's share this gospel. Let's get this gospel Ooh. out there yes. and get people, um, 
you know, lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will take care of them knowing God and the right God mm-hmm. and all of that. So to those of you that are listening, thank you for listening to the Transformational um, uh, Ministries International Podcast with Jackie and Lori. We're just coming on and just talking about um, things that we need to look at as believers and what can help us to be um, a better follower of Christ, a better follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and even knowing what we need to do in instances like this, Mm -hmm. knowing that at the end of what Jackie said, we need to pray. That's That's what will help this nation is that we need to pray. Pray for leadership. Yeah. Okay. So, did you have anything you want to close? No, out ma'am. With? I'm, I'm, we we uh, had a great time. We, Amen. Amen. We, we, you never know you. where you're gonna go. You, know. you just you just you just go. Just go. But um, all right. So, guys, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, this is uh, Transformational Ministries podcast on For More Radio. You can find us located on Spreaker. Also, don't forget if you are interested in listening to end time teaching. Uh, specifics about, you know, the time we're in and what's going on in life, then you might want to check out the word with Overseer J. Evans. You can find that on Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. You go to Spreaker and you can uh, find him. Or if you want an easier way, Google, Google the word with Overseer J. Evans, and you will find all of this dynamic teaching uh, concerning the end time. And if you're interested in just uh, uh, the good life with Dr. Lori, you can find that as well. Google me. You'll find me on every major platform, the good life with Dr. Lori. All right. So you guys have a great rest of the Sunday afternoon or evening or whatever it is, whatever day you're listening and be blessed. We love you and God bless you. And we are out. Mm